Uh, good evening. Welcome to Radiator Comics Studio. Uh, my name is Neil Bridot. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, and I run Radiator Comics, which distributes uh, handmade and small press uh, comics, zines, graphic novels. Um, and tonight we're presenting the next installment of our Nuts and Bolts series in which cartoonists and illustrators and writers and zinesters who have a connection to South Florida talk about a specific aspect of making comics and zines. Um, uh, this evening, we're thrilled uh, to host um, the writing duo uh, Carrie Bear and Lulu B, cartoonist Allison C.M., and um, Lillian Banderas and Steve Saiz of Dale Zine to discuss publishing. Uh, Radiator Comic Studio is a series of online programming and print publications to support the South Florida cartooning community uh, and to connect it to the larger national scene. Um, this initiative is made possible with the support of the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, and we're grateful for their support, as well as the support of Oolite Arts and the Miami Foundation. Um, we like to start every event with a land acknowledgement. It's really easy, especially um, during a time when we've had to pull away socially and physically to forget that we exist in a place and that that place has a long and often conflicted history. Um, it's really easy to sort of think of the natural and built environment around us as existing for us. But the land um, was here long before we were, and the people who have cared for that land um, are not gone. The land that we live on is stolen land, and a lot of the labor that we benefit from uh, is stolen labor. Uh, so it's important to acknowledge the land um, on which we live and work, as well as the indigenous people who have and continue to be the caretakers of this land. Here in South Florida, we live on Miccosukee and Seminole land. Um, before them, the Tequesta lived here for thousands of years. Um, it's important, too, to recognize the labor and um, involvement of African-American, Haitian, Bahamian, and other Caribbean people in um, the, the involvement of building up South Florida. Uh, we all have a lifelong responsibility to be better caretakers of the land on which we live and better community members and neighbors for those around us. Um, so we hope that these conversations that we host can um, contribute to, uh, to helping showcase, you know, people expressing feelings and ideas through published works in South Florida and inspire others to join in in the conversation. So uh, I wanna thank you for joining us this evening. I'm really looking forward to tonight's conversation. Publishing is one of my personal passions. Um, there are a lot of different ways that you can get your work seen uh, these days, whether uh, you're producing something for print or digital reading, um, and you can navigate the production in a lot of different right, ways, right? Like you can self-publish or you can have a small press or a larger press publish your work, or you can, you know, become a press yourself and publish other people's work. Um, so the presenters tonight are experienced in a variety of these methods, and there will be some cool overlapping and um, interesting differences to the presentations. So I'm gonna introduce the speakers in the order of their presentations and then hand it over to them. And um, following the presentations, we'll have time for questions and discussions. So um, our first presenters are uh, Bear and B. Um, Bear and B are um, writers and publishers of several comics, including And Help Us to Rebuild the Sky, Sun Grazed, and Rebuild the Sky Broken Stars. And congratulations to Bear and B for their recently successful uh, uh, Kickstarter campaign for the upcoming comic Sunkissed. Um, so welcome, Bear and B. Uh, and then um, following uh, Bear and B will be Allison C.M., born and raised in South Florida. Allison uh, developed an interest in drawing at a young age. Uh, her love for storytelling led to working in publishing, where she garnered skills in layout, cover design, and illustration. Um, she also sells and showcases her works at comic book conventions. So welcome, Allison. Uh, and then our final presenters tonight will be Dale Zine, established in 2000, uh, sorry, 2009 in Miami. Dale Zine is an independent printer and publisher with the goal of giving a platform to multimedia artists and designers. 
with humble beginnings as a zine collaboration about Garfield, Dale uh, has broadened into something of an open cultural space for the Miami community with offerings uh, ranging from all age zine workshops to independent uh, radio show, um, pop -up, up events, and uh, most recently a storefront in downtown Miami. Collaborations of note include those with Tim Biscup, Matt Fury, Lego Welt, and uh, Friends With You, to name just a few of over 75 titles and counting. Uh, and you can find their work in Miami, Tokyo, LA, New York, Beijing, and online at dollazine.com. So um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Oop. And I am going to turn the presentation over to Bear Ann B. Unmute, got it. Hello. <laughs> Let me go ahead and grab our presentation. All right, can everyone see it? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right, yay, all right. Um, you want to make that more? Uh, well, I was going to put that pointer on the door. Okay, there we go. Yeah. All right. So, self-publishing comics and a, a no, in no way authoritative guide by Baron B. Yes. Our, our actual comic book um, publication is called Biku Comics. It's um, sort of an anagram between my name and our artist, Annika. So, who are we? We're a writing team that's created eight comics and webcomics. Um, and Neil, you know, did a wonderful job introducing us. Uh, our, our most current project is Rebuild the Sky. Um, and as you can see in the background, it sort of goes through uh, what we've been able to do on Kickstarter, which we're going to talk mostly about that because that's what we've had the most success and um, uh, experience in. So you've made a comic. Taking a creation and putting it in the page is difficult, but it's even more so put into something to hold in your hands or to show to someone. Right, um, because it's not only just how you show it, it, it in the physical form, but Today, there's a lot of um, digital medium that even if you're not, you know, having a physical thing, you're able to uh, still be published. And there's, we go through three, three different ones. Uh, one is third party hosting, um, self hosting, or self publishing uh, crowdfunding. Okay, so third party hosting, this is um, putting your stuff on a website, basically. So there's Tapas, Webtoons, DeviantArt, Tumblr, Reddit, any other sort of image hosting website. Tapas and Webtoons are specifically comic platforms. Mm -hmm. But I know that they also have novels. So it's like if, you, if you've written a novel, um, you can also host it on those sites. Mm -hmm. Anything that you can serialize, you can put on there. Um, so the pros, uh, platforms like Tapas and Webtoons offer ad revenue uh, opportunities. If you get a certain number of followers or subscribers, you can start getting um, some money from ads. Yeah, ads or like uh, the the fans themselves can interact and they can they can give you like on Tapas they give you ink, and that's uh, got mo uh, money behind it. Um, they have you don't have to worry about building a website. Um, and they have a built-in community feature, and you can interact, like she said. Um, so the cons are that you're at the whims of whoever runs the website. Uh, if you see Tumblr, what happened a few years ago, um, you can't control the layout, the presentation, et cetera, or the sites can just shut down. Um, and a minor disclaimer, Lulu currently works at Tapas as a flatter. I do. Um, we're trying not to be biased. <laughs> I really enjoy uh, working with Tapas in terms of uh, just how how great they are in, in getting your works out. Um, when I was talking before about like the novel versus comics, they actually, you know, they'll transfer your novel if it gets really popular into a comic and then you have like um, more ways to express yourself and to be published. We work hand in hand with creators to make their make them successful. Too. Yeah. Case in point. Okay, so like on on Tapas, 
specifically, um, and this goes into you know you're not you're not publishing in the physical sense, but you're you're publishing on on this website. Um, it's the age of smartphones. So we, as you can see here, have a page of traditional comics, which is from our comic Sunrays. Um, and when we post it, we're we're starting to post it actually on Pappas. We had to transfer it into a scrolling format. So if you'll notice, um, you know the the different panels go from um, above to below, the, the bubbles are bigger so you can see them on a smaller screen, uh, that sort of thing. So it's been really interesting actually we just kind of learned about this. Um, it's easier to go from a traditional format to the scrolling format just because, um, I mean, try to make the scrolling format into a traditional comic, like a weird puzzle that won't work. So, so if you are planning to post online, Make it like this first and then cut it up so that you save some time if you're going to publish it um, in a physical format later on. Mm -hmm. Self-hosted website, WordPress, and literally any other web hosting platform. I only know WordPress. Um, pros, you have complete, com creative, complete creative control. Um, and you don't have to worry about content restrictions. Um, and any of the money goes straight to you. The cons are that you have to set everything up. You have to build it, all that goes into making a website. And there's no built-in community. Or way to interact. Yeah. Way to interact. Mm -hmm. um, helpful WordPress plugins and themes, Comic Press, Comic Easel, Easel uh, Manga Press, and Web Comic. Side note, a lot of these haven't been updated in a couple years. Uh, it just isn't a thing, but they still work so far. So if you go if you go to a website, chances are they're going to be hosted on WordPress. All right, and then this is sort of the one that we go in the most depth in because we have the most um, experience in it: uh, self-publishing and crowdfunding. So examples can include Kickstarter, GoFundMe, Patreon, Google Direct, Indiegogo, Smashwords, Gumroad, Etsy, it goes on and on. Um, pros are that you have a total control of the end product and you have the satisfaction of knowing people are actually willing to pay for your stuff, which is amazing. Um, cons, you know, I, I'm I just read that like only 35% of Kickstarters are successful. Um, there's a lot going into it that, that it, I mean, there's so much going into it. We could do an entire presentation just on how to have a successful Kickstarter, you know? Um, and we're, we're people dropping out at 24 hours. Oh before. my gosh. Okay, so for our last one, like like two different people who had both backed us for $100, both canceled on like within 24 hours of our, and we've got, it was, it was a bad time. But, <laughs> but everything worked out and it's all fine. Um, but one of the things, that we wanted to go into um, were some things that we've learned after having a free successful campaign. One, always have a friend look it over, especially if they are in the industry with comics or they've supported a lot of Kickstarters. Um, make sure to give them specific things you'd like them to look at. Um, for your first project, expect that it's more proof that you can handle a successful campaign. Um, it definitely helps in future ones. And once you do multiple campaigns, Kickstarter notifies your previous backers, and um, you get a lot of, of uh, support that way. And, and for taxes, yeah, always make sure that you consult a professional. You know, we talk to H&R Block, all that stuff. Um, keep your business separate from personal. So we had like, we have our own separate uh, Kickstarter account that we don't put anything else into, and that sort of thing. Um, and always spend everything that you make. Um, just case in point, this is our first Kickstarter, okay? Um, and if you'll notice, it, it, it goes up very slowly in little increments all the way through uh, until you get to where my mom donated. <laughs> and then, and then uh, I felt a little better. Um, and it keeps going up slowly, all right? And most of it is actually, um, they got us from Instagram because our artist actually has a really good following on Instagram. So one of the biggest things you can do to help yourself would be um, to have like a, a fan base before you start in on a Kickstarter. But if you'll notice from um, the one we just had, uh, this is our biggest increase. And it happened at the very beginning because Kickstarter emailed all the people who had already uh, backed us. 
and um, in previous campaigns. And if you also notice, like our first was for 3,000, um, and then we realized that shipping is so much more, and it just keeps going up. So then, you know, so much shipping. So we were able to um, rectify that as well. So there's there's a lot of things you have to think about when you're when you're trying to do something through um, a crowdfunding campaign. Um, just a little random information again. <laughs> Patreon. It's best um, if you're able to produce it consistently and. Um, are willing to post regularly. Right, like our artist has a Patreon, she posts every single day. Um, it takes a while to build up a following if you're doing it right. Most of the people we've talked to says it takes three years before you can really like live off of it. Yeah. Um, Patreon now has some pretty cool options for merchandising though. It's, they take care of everything, they just sort of, you just sort of give them uh, what you want to be done and they'll take care of it. Yeah. Um, uh, another way that you can publish, self-publish, is through pre-orders, unless you collect money now from your fan base um, and, and uh, spend it later. Um, you know exactly how many copies you're going to print and also limiting your pre-orders either by a date or by I'm only going to have this amount um, causes demand and then people snatch it up. Um, yeah, and then crowdfunding, which goes back to Kickstarter. So many things. So many things. So many things. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, ooh, all right. <laughs> so, this is probably a little bit of a, what's it, like it was important to do. Uh, recommended software, Clip Studio Paint. It's actually um, a drawing program, but the more expensive edition allows for the compiling of comics and themes right in the um, program. So you don't need anything else. Um, I've never played with it because I, I'm on Google and I don't have the more expensive version. <laughs> um, Affinity Publisher is um, a software specifically for publishing, right? It's in the name. Um, you compile it, make it pretty, export it as a PDF, you can send it to a printer. Um, it has a steep learning curve and it's a little wonky. Um, there's not many tutorials because it's a little new. Um, Adobe InDesign is Pretty much the same thing, except it's uh, industry standard. There's lots of tutorials. Um, you could send an InDesign uh, file to anyone; and they'd be able to do it. Um, it is subscription-based, though, so it's like 20 bucks a month. Uh, Scrivis is open source and free. I it looks like it was made in the 90s, though, and I opened it up and I have no idea what to do in that program. Um, but, you know, if you want it, it's free. And then this one on the end here is a little different. Um, it's for making campaign videos. It's Adobe Spark free. Um, you, you just, it's basically like making a slideshow. You put it in there and you put some music and animate it. And it's important to have a video, right? Yeah, definitely. For Kickstarter campaigns, um, campaigns that have videos always do better. Uh, there's been studies on that, so even if you don't feel like you need one, do it. Yeah. And then finally, um, for our our printers, okay, always get approved. One hundred and million fifty bajillion percent, always get approved. Um, otherwise, well, yeah, we're good. So, Print Center USA. Uh, it's the one that we've used for our last two campaigns. This is. Our actual comic. Um, it's very good quality. You can do small runs. It's a little expensive. Um, uh, it works out that you basically four dollars a comic. So there are cheaper ones out there, but everyone tells us that the quality is really good. They're very impressed. Yeah, that's always like the number one thing they say when they get it. Yeah, they're not going to say it doesn't seem like indies. Um, next, Print Ninja. It's recommended by Kickstarter. They, again, really good quality, um, lots of options. So, so many options. So many options. So many options. The problem is that you have to have 250 minimum uh, copies. Mm -hmm. um, and then Print Keg. Print Keg does really good art. And, and prints. And Amazing prints. prints. And uh, postcards and bookmarks. 
but they don't do very good comics. <laughs> so if you want to do extras, compare that to them. Okay, so like they're different sizes. It's not really an actual standard comic book size. It's too big. Um, it, the, it, the ink's kind of sticky. Yeah. Um, so we definitely stuck with a uh, print keg for the prints, for the prints and for the postcards and things like that, but just went with something else for the comic. So always get a proof. That's the 100% most like helpful thing you can do. Um, cause you always want to give, you always want to ensure good quality when you're, when you're self-publishing. All right. <laughs> and then our little resources, uh, this is, these are the resources that we used. Um, and you can go to comicsexperience.com, makingcomics.com. There's this really good link, um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll put it somewhere, uh, for how to do Indiegogo versus Kickstarter and what the differences are. Um, uh, Kickstarter has a really good, um, uh, fulfillment. Uh, list actually pretty much anything you could ever need is on there um, and this is our stuff so our Instagram is bq underscore comics uh, rebuildthesky.com our the patreon for our artist is patreon.com slash anacupinata and and then also tapas is a baby and we have a discord yeah if you want to join our discord we totally. talk about all kinds of things <laughs> Right, no, we, we try and make sure that if you are also a creative, um, uh, we are very supportive in, in whatever it is that you would like to accomplish. So we're going to stop sharing now. <laughs> we took too long. I'm totally we're sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you all. We're going to meet ourselves. Thank, thanks so much, uh, Carrie and Lulu. That was really great. That was a ton of information. Like. So that was really fantastic. Um, and I'm sure that we'll, uh, people have some really great questions. Um, so uh, our next presenter is Allison. And I'm going to turn Allison's microphone on and mine off. OK, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I really loved uh, Lulu and B's presenta presentation because they went more into the digital realm where they have um, webtoons and tapas and also the crown footing that you would use for Kickstarter to print out your uh, comics. Uh, from my experience, I'm more on the traditional side and because uh, I've been working in, uh, uh, in a small publisher since 2015. So I built a lot of experience from, you know, building, uh, uh, creating physical books that people can have in hand and they can showcase it at different um, uh, conventions or they can just sell it on the Amazon or they could go to uh, different fairs to sell their books as well. So I'll give uh, um, a short view from the traditional and then I also mention about going to the digital. Uh, let me begin by sharing my screen. Uh, let's see here. All right. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen all right perfect okay great so let me go ahead and start so as you know there's different approaches to publishing um of course it really depends what you would like to choose but before i go into it, i can just go ahead and uh, introduce uh so my name is allison i'm an independent artist based in south florida and as I mentioned before, I've been working in publishing since 2015. My background is in communication and media, and I also do have um, um, uh, my, my work site I place on Instagram and also Tumblr. So you can go ahead and check right after the presentation. So there are different approaches to publishing. Uh, you can take the traditional route, you can take the independent publishing route, or you can go into self-publishing. Honestly, you would have to go ahead and see what's the best for you. So, of course, for Lulu and B, they went towards the self-publishing. I'll go ahead and explain more about the traditional publishing. So, for a traditional publishing, people might think of New York City, the Big Five. I mean, the, the Big Apple, but there's also the Big Five. The publishers are up there. For example, Penguin, uh, um, Penguin, Penguin Random House. Uh, there's also Scholastic, uh, Macmillan, 
But of course, since this is more focused to graphic novels, here are some examples of uh, traditional publishing houses for graphic novels for second books, Amulet uh, Books, Ani, Ani Press, uh, IDW Publishing, and Image Comics. So those are the ones that people usually think of automatically because you most likely will see them at Barnes & Noble or any big uh, publishing or, or big, uh, uh, big bookstore. So when it comes to having your actual graphic novel presented at a book publisher, a traditional book publisher, normally you would need a, liter a literary agent to help you put your book in front of um, a, a, an editor's hands. So they're pretty much your representative. You send your uh, pitch to them, they'll read it, and they'll see if there's a certain publisher that would like to have this uh, aligned with their, um, with their market. So uh, there is a website right here where you can go ahead and take a look. Uh, of course, if you would like to have the link, you can uh, uh, send an email to me, and I'll, uh, and I'll send the link to you. Uh, so once the editors have the book in hand or your manuscript, whatever you have, they'll go ahead and review it and they'll send it to acquisitions. So acquisitions basically include the head of the departments, marketing, sales, art, that's, um, they're all involved in making the decision to decide if this book can make money. That's honestly the, the major thing that they're looking for. Can this book make a profit? And after their approval, they'll send you the contract in advance payment. Uh, of course, you would have to read through the contract thoroughly to see how your rights are uh, reserved and how, um, how you will be paid. Uh, when I say, when I mentioned about advance payment, sometimes they can give you a certain lump sum in the beginning, in the middle, and, and at the end, depending on where you are uh, with your, uh, uh, with your with your process and um, for the rights sometimes there could I'm not saying sometimes but most of the time they will have certain a certain percentage back so you would have to see how much you're getting and how much they're receiving as well and when it comes to printing they pretty much handle everything they would ship it off uh, or they would send uh, the files for print in country or perhaps abroad and one example would be China. They would send uh, the pages to China and you know, have everything printed over there and have the books shipped, um, shipped to the United States and they would have everything handled, um, they would handle the distribution for you. So they handled everything after that point. So pretty much you create your graphic novel, you give it to them and they take care of all the, all the um, in-between heavy work. Of course, you will be involved um, sometimes your voice could be a little bit lost here and there because literally you're giving your book to a huge company. So of course, if you want to, uh, you know, avoid that, um, you can go into independent publishing. So that's where I'm working right now at an independent publisher. So they can include small business, a family old or own, or they can be completely local. Um, uh, but compared to traditional, they're paying for it. They're paying for putting all the, the, the budgeting into the, into, the, into the production. While for independent publishing, you might have to pay out of pocket for the editing, for the layout, design, ISBN, printing, marketing, and distribution. So it takes a lot out of your part to go into it. If you feel that, uh, if you feel that you cannot handle everything by yourself. Because it is a it's it is a major process to um, to to publish a book, so it's always great to work as a team or with someone who has knowledge. Um, of course, uh, they will also give you a contract. You have to understand the payment process, level of ownership, and how they can create the product for you at the very end. Please do your research on the company's performance. I have, uh, I remember working with one client who actually published a book at a different company. I'm not going to say names because they're honestly, they're long gone right now. Um, they, they butchered the budget. They didn't 
they didn't um, perform to the standards that they promised and they got sued and millions of dollars were lost in the process. So please do your best to research the independent book publisher and see what books they have published and the performance of their sales of their books. So now for self-publishing, I know Lulu and B went more into depth about it. Uh, so obviously you have 100% creative control, but it's always great to work with, uh, with the team uh, to create your layout or your images. And also you know, for the lettering, you definitely need to use Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. They are definitely uh, subscription-based, so please keep in mind there will be a certain amount of money that you'll pay per month. Of course, there are open source programs that they mentioned in their previous uh, presentation, so I do recommend looking back into their PowerPoint. We have also ClipPaint Studio. It's more illustrator-friendly and also comic book-friendly. has all of the integrated uh, options for you to create bubbles, panels, and honestly, it's a little bit more comic friendly compared to publisher um, and illustrator and also in design. You would have to go ahead and publish an ISBN or international standard book number. They can be quite expensive. So you would have to go ahead and see um, how much you should purchase. Sometimes they can come in stacks. So uh, I didn't list the website, but of course, uh, ask me through an email I can send you where you can find the link to purchase an ISBN or a, a block of ISBN. And um, when it comes to self-publishing, use you could use crowdfunding or out of pocket. Because like I said, when it once it comes to the public when it comes to the printing aspect, it can be pretty pricey. So please uh, do keep in mind of the typical budget by reaching out to these um, um, your your printers to see how much you would have to um, collect to make your uh, book possible. So when it comes to printing, you can reach out to uh, a local company, the out of state or abroad to uh, to different uh, country. For example, the UK. I know there's a friend who did a Kickstarter and she reached out to a publish uh, to a printer in the UK. It was about a dollar per book um, that she used to pay for her book. You can also go digital by uh, having your comic placed on Webtoons, Tapas, or Hiveworks. Uh, there's others that they mentioned in the uh, um, B's presentation. Please read, their read, uh, please read their terms and conditions before uploading to their website because you might not know what, how much ownership that they have or how they'll be paid. Just be sure to read the fine lines. Uh, you can also post your comics to Twitter, Instagram, or Tumblr. I was also thinking about putting TikTok in there. I'm not sure how that would work out, but maybe you could put your comics there on, on TikTok because I know it's a, definitely a new uh, place for you to expand your, um, your exposure. You can establish your own website, but you have to figure out a way to bring traffic to it. So uh, another final thing is you can actually make your own theme by hand. And I do have a tutorial online uh, where you can go ahead and look at the process of how to make it by hand. Of course, uh, it's a little bit more tedious than you know, using digital or going to a, a, a traditional publisher or independent publisher, but there is uh, a lot of love that, and, and, and hard uh, physical work into making uh, a zine. So uh, that brings to the end of my presentation. Of course, if you have any more questions, you can email me at allisoncm21 at gmail.com or you can send a direct a message to me via Instagram. Uh, I hope I covered as much as I can uh, for whatever you're wondering. So thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Oh, that was great. Thanks so much, mm -hmm. Allison. I really, uh, there was a very thorough presentation and like, mm -hmm. I like that th th there was like a, this continuous theme of like, pay attention to what you're like signing up for, like pay attention please, to like all please, the, please, all please the terms. Attention. That was mm -hmm. really great. Thanks so much. Um,
Our final presenters of the evening are Dale Zine. I'm going to turn on their microphones and turn mine off. Hi, hey guys. everyone, and everyone was incredible in the presentations. And thank you to Neil for hosting us. Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I'm Lillian, this is Steve, and uh, we're part of Dale Zine. Um, I'm going to have Steve kind of start off where we kind of started. He started balancing and I kind of went along the way. <laughs> yeah, let me share my screen here. It's hard to follow you guys. You guys had such good presentations. Yeah. And <laughs> you right. could have your, your stuff together. Yeah. Let me show you. Is that working there? Is your screen? Yeah, so, okay, cool. So like Neil said, um, Dalazine started pretty much like with an idea of like self-publishing and I was really interested in zines around 2009. Um, at the time I was working uh, in a creative office, fine art collective called Friends With You uh, here in Miami, Florida in uh, the design district. And the, the people, like the atmosphere in the office was really, uh, you know, my, the creative directors I worked with were just, we were just always like doing something that was just mind blowing to me. And it's like the place I always wanted to work in, you know? So at that point we started, I thought it'd be fun one day. Let's just do a zine about something random. So I just started about one key figure or theme. So I just thought, of, I, I love Garfield. Let's all reinterpret Garfield. So I put a call out to my friends that were visiting the office. Like at that time, uh, friends that, are, that we're still really close with, like Jen St uh, Alvaro, Lazarbi, you know, some names on here, they all like took a spread and pretty much just started sending in submissions and then they would send it to their friends and then it just kept growing and growing and met some people on from Tumblr when we first started our site over 10 years ago that just kept sending stuff. So from this zine, um, a lot of people that featured our work in this particular book started, you know, wanting to create their own zines. So, so it just grew from there pretty much. Yeah, again, so that was like a very DIY, like, we kind of was like, let's just do something. I mean, I wasn't part of this, but this is almost all our zines still, it's very much like project by project. Um, obviously, you know, our collection has grown a lot more, you know, the years now we do a lot more book fairs, we have a shop online and physical, so supply and demand is a bit higher, but almost until very recently, all our zines are handmade. Um, we still try to make them handmade and in-house when we can. Um, yeah, like Allison, the way you mentioned, you know, cutting and like <laughs> using the stapler, the long stapler, it's like a passion. Like it's, it's, it's just like, it feels so good to do that, but it's, it is, it does get difficult, you know. Um, we still, we still try to do that, but you know, we have about, um, like about 75 titles and counting. So it's, it gets to be like a lot sometimes to do that. So we, we have worked with, you know, printers that we found online and some presses that our friends have uh, referred to us. Yeah, or like people that we just like, like how their book looks and we just ask them like, who printed it? Did you print it? And we reach out to them. Uh, our approach is very, not really, like we kind of come as we go till this day. Like we try to figure like, we. We want to do we like walk go backwards <laughs> yeah. sometimes like you know obviously like we've learned a lot <laughs> because of like things that we've like made mistakes on and we wish we had like you know had planned some stuff out at the same time i feel like that's the sense of diy and uh yeah like i want to add one thing one thing you guys were mentioning about you know like quality and you know like some presses are better for this and that like in terms of us, like we've always felt like, it, it, like if for example, if I want to do a zine, you know, which I've had, I have a few co copies in my in our archive. I don't really care so much about the quality. Like I wanted it to look good, but I want to print more of it. So like if I if I can do it in black and white and it's the bit mat like ratio is like a little jagged on the edge. Like I I like that. Like I don't mind it as much, you know. But we do work with a lot of artists here and. You know they do want their stuff to look really crispy and 
super beautiful, we'll find the vendor that can achieve that. And um, but it all ranges, you know. Yeah. Um, I guess that's where it differs, like in that stuff. But um, like this example here, this is like a book by the artist Tim Biscoff that we published. And he wanted something that, that would really capture like the textures he was using with like charcoal and the bright colors. So we, we found like a really nice printer for this one. Um, and to compare it, like one of our, our first zines by one of our buddies, Laz Rodriguez. Local Miami photographer. Yeah, amazing local Miami photographer that we've known forever. He was okay with like doing something more Xeroxy and um, DIY, you know, if we we're able to print more and spread the message further, you know. Um, so it just, like over the years, it's just been growing and growing. Um, our latest book, we've, we've always started from like, you know, visual scenes and stuff like that. But um, the latest book we released actually was more in the, like a literary zine accompanied by illustrations. So this is one that I thought it would be nice to like get a, a good printer as well and like maybe print, make it a little bit more limited, but the quality is a lot nicer. So it all varies, you know? Yeah, I mean, as you can see in our last four zines, how the variety, it's there's still like one that means to, uh, we just can make, it's just a collection of photos to one that's like, you know, more of a, a book bind with beautiful photography. Yeah. Um, and like, and also incredible literature. Um, so we still go back, like back and forth to what we like. And I guess it's by case by case to what we want to do. Also by, you know, depending on who the artist is, how many they want to print. Some artists just want to print a very few limited and that's it, that, that's what exists. And some people are always like, print them as they sell, I don't care. So that's another aspect that we, we try to ask in the beginning because then we, we can kind of gauge. Yeah, and in terms, you guys touched on like how, how you market your zines and how do you get something going, right? Like if you were to just print something, like I did at the beginning, I would just print at whatever advertising job I was at <laughs> when everybody went home. I was like, you know, like had a stack of them. We may or may not still do that now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And the zine thing, it's a little different, but, you know, your buddies are FedEx or whatever it may be, you know, how do you get that out? So like, I don't, I don't know much about like e-commerce and stuff like that. Like I pretty much just made, you know, in 2010, I believe it was, I just made a Tumblr page and I figured out how to embed PayPal buttons on them and it looked horrible, but it got, you know, it got the work out there. And, it kind of got, we started, in Instagram started becoming like popular and then yeah. it just kind of kept growing from there. But it, it, it's another thing too, when I, I, when I kind of popped in around 12, 2013, I, I was like, you know, the zine thing that you're doing, that's a hobby, like you, I see, and it's, it's still like our favorite hobby, but it's kind of like our part-time, like passion, yeah. passion um, is that I just, I thought. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, like I guess I guess. Oh, I just okay. Never mind. <laughs> See, was Instagram was there? Like you know, there's book fairs that we're going to that have the zine sections. I was like, you you know, we can apply to these things. You're, there's nothing that you're not doing that all these people are doing. We started doing that, and I remember we and we still debate about this about how DIY we want to be and how or things that we want to do push for us to have an Instagram. I was like, it's a great way to catalog what we're, what we have out there. And we don't have, like, we have this idea of what we want to do the next two years, four years, five years, but honestly, we are doing everything as we go. Yeah. It's just like one of those things, like we don't have like a, you know, like a formal business plan for this. Like we love it so much. We just keep trying to keep it afloat. Like we, we don't have like grants or. We actually Anything. got our first grant. Yeah, we've actually, yeah, uh, our first in 10 years, <laughs> yeah. so, but that's great. <laughs> um, but that, that's something that we really try for, but we just kind of fund it on our own because we love it, you know? Like, we get home from work and we just start cutting zines and yeah. stapling till like, 3 in the morning, and we just love it. Like, we just want to keep going and keep building the community here in Miami with this stuff, you know? And, like, and I, I think that's, like, 
something we never want to change a little bit. It's like us kind of like losing control. So we love like being able to like self it. But now with like, even even like the money that comes into the project goes back, goes back into the project. Yeah. And um, we'll never win on Shark Tank, <laughs> um, you know? It's not a money making <laughs> Or, but, but, but it's but it's we, we don't care it. for that that's like not the goal you know it's like kind of doing these really fun projects with people around the world and be able to talk to people like you so um but then that's also i we like you know are able to meet some of our heroes that we like love and like collected their books that we like meet them at a book fair and we're like wow like you even have bags that are printed so beautifully and the guy's like been around for like 20 years it's like i started doing that like two months ago <laughs> you know so it's like maybe we're all in the same boat at the end of the day yeah like so like the one thing i want to mention that it really helped us you know once we were we thing and was uh printed matter like they're like one of our biggest heroes and in 2011 i think it was or 12, 12. 2012 in la they accepted us to our first printed matter book fair um, the time from Miami to LA and where I was moving there for work and so, and so was Lillian, um, and they accepted us to this book fair and just seeing like how many publishers were, you know, like doing the same things as us and more established obviously. And it was just the most inspiring thing ever. Like the more book fairs you do, yeah. like the bigger perspective you're going to get. And sometimes it's not even how established you are. Like I also mirror like next to like this really incredible artist selling like his made book and right next to him were like a bunch of 15 year olds selling their zines yeah, and I, awesome. that, that's like the energy i love yeah it was great and you know like i guess just like doing this ourselves and just really caring about it has opened up doors where we wouldn't imagine like three years ago now uh we got approached to open up like a little brick and mortar store if I'm not sure if, like, if any of you guys are local to Miami, but um, we were able to open up our own shop. Um, and this is a, a Fat Joe walked by. He didn't come to our shop, but he was just <laughs> happened to be walking by, so we thought that was funny. But this is a picture of the shop. Um, That's like a dated. It's, it's, now it's a walk-in shop. Yeah, this is like some older images. But this has been like a great, this is like our dream of ours, to always have like a little store where we can feature you know like sub publishers like us you know like our message is always like we don't we don't want to be the only scene you know people down here like bring your own books like yeah. come start your own thing like put them in our store you know so i feel like we've been really lucky over the years like just it's been hard you know like we've just been doing it on our own but we've been really blessed and the fact that we just keep the project afloat pretty much yeah this is how lo the store looks now um and the last years we've been able to like host our friends that come by uh, through this in December during Miami Art Week. And it's, it's been fun, honestly. And, you know, during COVID, like I guess like speaking in terms of where we're at now, obviously <laughs> that, um, you know, we were forced to close obviously um, our stores, but we've always had a presence. Yeah, it temporarily had to close. Um, so we, we pretty much just put a lot of the items that we had in the store in a, in a new online shop. Um, and we've been using, what is this, Shopify? Um, and we feel like it's kind of very simple, you know, to post your stuff and it looks clean and it, and it does a good job. Like, I, I really like this platform. Um, it's been working for us, I guess. Yeah, and it's but, also helped us so much with, like, um, organization, like organization yeah. and, and understanding how much money we make yeah. because like that is something <laughs> that we we don't were, know we this, didn't really uh, think about think this through <laughs> you know and shopify has helped us really like or, uh, or, organize, or losing money. Yeah, yeah like really organize <laughs> ourselves and uh, make the work a little bit easier because we both we both have full-time jobs and um and hopefully one day a dollar zine could be our full-time job but until that day um we just are funding into this and however it can be easier for us to have us exist so you really appreciate that and also yeah. everyone's like really great advice like we took down so many yeah videos. you guys have your <laughs> stuff together it's insane yeah. <laughs> we're like wow 
I took photos. <laughs> yeah, I wish I knew all that stuff before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we're inspired by you guys and like it's I just love like the, the, the Florida like zine or self publishing thing was like nothing before, you know, like it's been so great, you know, it's been like little by little, you know. Yeah, so I like, mean obviously I don't I wouldn't want to say nothing before. I think there's always not been, nothing but it's I, been, I think there's always been been a scene and I think internationally there's always been a scene. Um and it's just nicer that it's not as hard to find. Yeah, like speaking in terms of Miami, like we we were able to, you know, like to meet one of our heroes from uh, Scamzine, Erica Lyle. Like we we let a talk, we let a talk with her uh, sometime last year, and it was great to hear her perspective on how like she was doing stuff like pre computers and pre you know social networking and like it gave us a lot of perspective. Was like we're doing the same thing, you know, almost, but. She was doing it in a more analog way, like yeah. mailing stuff to people. And but it put us in. There's a, yeah, like for sure. There's always been a great Miami zine. Yeah. I like think that, now it's like you can actually come together. But and, also with like a digital platform like Instagram and yeah. everything else, it's just a little bit easier to see. But yeah, yeah um, any questions or any like? I feel um, like I'm rambling, but yeah, if you any have any advice, questions, yeah, <laughs> if you want to give us, we're open to it. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think that's our. That's our <laughs> cool, thanks. Yeah, we can open things up to um, to questions now. And we do have a question already in the, um, or a couple of questions in, in the chat from, oh, from Ryan. Um, so the question I think is is directed to, to Dalai Zine, kind of like asking, you know, we talked a little bit about like the um, sort of the, the, the money aspects of, of different um, different publishing situations. And since um, most of the zines are print collaborations with other artists, is there a financial relationship? Like, is it a formal contract or just a simple agreement? Um, does it vary project by project? Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, it was very informal. It was just like buddies that were like, oh my God, you're going to print my painting in a zine? Like, let's do it. Like, give me a few copies and like, it still is that way sometimes? Like, yeah, I think it's, but it, now, I, it's, now that, you know, I think that we're able, we know that like, we're going to fairs and we have a, a bookshop. We have had it for a little bit. We're trying to do more, like less work for us in the end, which is like accounting. Yeah. So <laughs> Accounting sucks. Yeah, way, it's not, so it's, it's not, well, <laughs> yeah, it's, Terrible. Oh, yeah. But we, we try to figure it out from the beginning, so we're not always like figuring out the end. If people want to collaborate with us, great. But end of the day, it's like a um, we try to do it case by case. But before it was a lot more like, hey, you want to do this? We'll pay for printing. Um, you can, or we could go split with the printing, and you have half the copies or something like that. To now, it's it's more case by case and. Um, and just figuring out what works for everybody. Yeah, now now we're moving into like, since we're getting more organized and you know, every year I feel like we take Dalazine more seriously and like it's become now and um, percentages and all that stuff. We're like kind of like more of a real publisher, I guess. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> it's, it's also like we, we want to do bigger skill things eventually and uh, meaning coming growing outside of the zine to grow books. So, um, yeah, I like to do it all. Like we're yeah. thinking of, you know, publishing, you know, like printing records and yeah, it's just always like, we're just trying to just like grow and grow but, and see where it takes. But for most part, it's been just a very collaborative situation with each artist. Cool. Um, I, so if anybody has questions, you can either, um, click the raise, the raise hand button in your participant section, or you can type it in the chat if you want me to ask the question. Um, I was thinking, um, maybe, maybe Allison, we can start with you with this question. Just like, you know, there are a lot of options that were brought up during this conversation about like, you know, uh, digital, print, zines, books, 
you know, all, all of those sorts of things, websites, um, at what point are you considering form when you plan, like the publications that, that you've self-published or that you, you work with others on, on publishing? And then we can move to the other panelists. Were you referring that to, to Allison? I think, yeah, well, I was... Yeah, Allison, if you want to turn your mic. Okay, sorry. All right, no, no, no. Um, uh, let's see here. So, a question. oh, sorry, just, I, it was a question from me, just kind of like, at what point in the process of creating a project are you thinking about like what the format is gonna ultimately end up looking like? Like, is that like from the word go or is it like you're working on a project and then like after a while you're kind of like, oh, this would be better as like, a zine or as like, uh, you know, a fancier comic book or a web comic or? Well, honestly, I think it really depends on where you feel your uh, book will do well. Uh, uh, I would sell, you know, if you're thinking about selling at a local, um, like for example, at a book fair or a uh, comic book film convention, for me, I think, you can both use a fancier finish for a comic, or you can just do it by hand. When you're doing it by um, a, a nicer finish, of course, you would have to pay a little bit more by using a publisher. But you know, I think a lot of people like that nice uh, finish touch because they might because they would usually see this um, a typical look at a comic book store. So uh, maybe. For as uh, for a zine or sorry for a zine, most likely you would see a more of a smaller, uh, small press fair. Honestly, it really depends on the audience where you feel your book will or your comic will uh, perform well. Cool. Uh, uh, B and Bear or um, or Dolly Zine, do do either of y'all have have opinions about um, the? The biggest opinion I have, I think, is, um, you know, if you're trying to do something on a crowdfunding, uh, you want to get as wide an, uh, a fan base at the get-go as possible. So, um, you know, making something free, like a web comic for a while uh, in that scrolling format and then converting it into um, something more traditional and then having um, a Kickstarter campaign, the people, the audience is already there. So that might be something where you want to start with one and then transfer it to the other. It all depends on what your dream is too. Like we wanted to have that physical comic that we could hold in our hands. And that was really important to us. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. Like also what Allison mentioned, like it depends on your audience. Like I feel like our audience is like the book fairs and you know, people that come to our store and our site. But what I, when I'm browsing at the, you know, like the printed book fairs, I really like when it feels like handmade and like, if like the cover is like Rizzle printed and it's different than the next, like I'll try to look through the stack to see like the messiest one. Of or, course, I like the <laughs> fanciest one. I yeah. like, I'm like, whoa, what kind of printing is this? Like it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Like I, I really like the handmade books. Like you see some wild stuff like 27 Rizzo colors with a foil stamp on top. I'm like, dude, like I'll pay whatever you want for this. Like <laughs> this took an hour, like each book probably. Yeah. Like it depends on your audience, I think. Like yeah. what, what medium, but well, I do appreciate the handmade. Yeah, I think also like- Or physical, obviously. I mean, I mean and there's also a difference between like your audience and like what you're personally into. Like, I think that we keep it really playful and we, we like that. But, you know, the, some stuff that we sell at the, at the bookshop or at, you know, I go by myself is it, it's a little bit not what we would publish. And it, yeah, and the production level of the book itself is like, yeah. you know, more high end or whatever, yeah. maybe. But and, and also, yeah. it's just like also like what we, we like, you know, like Rizzo printing, like we're, we finally got a Rizzo printer and we're like kind of playing around with that. We've had a lot of friends that donate for those and I, we've always loved it, but we're really new to it. So it's like a new format for us to learn how to use. 
Yeah, and I do. I do want to add like one. I remember one specific time I was at a a book fair in New York, and there was there's always like a um, you guys, but there's always like that section where it's like vintage used books, and they're you know like hundreds of dollars. Like and there was like um, a book, like a, it was like a furniture design, like Italian furniture design book, but it was designed by one of my favorite graphic designers from Italy, and he had handmade the book. And it was like so, like it was like a thousand dollars or something. But I would have killed to had that, but he he himself made it. Like he did that ring binding and the hardcover book. It's like that speaks to me, you know. So it it also like I agree with Allison. It is your audience, like who you're speaking to. Um, here's a question uh, from Sean asking um, for someone looking to print their comics from home: Is there a certain type of printer that you would recommend? Yeah, so I think Allison, maybe you, you have some advice on yeah, that. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in um, with that. So um, I know for the, in the presentation, I did show my, uh, my zine, uh, May and Bean, and I printed it all. It was a mix. So I printed at home. I used an Epson printer. Um, and the one, make sure when you're buying a printer, I mean, it, it could be any other type, but like I said, the one that I use is Epson, and it allows you to pour your ink inside of uh, the con uh, within the um, where I could say the container, where you can put uh, the ink in compared to putting in a cartridge. A cartridge, because I did use an HB printer with uh, where you can just slip it in, and that wasted the ink. Like after a few after a few printing of probably twenty pages, all of a sudden I would have to go and uh, buy a new one. So definitely, I recommend Epson. I am still using um, the ink that I poured in from last year. So it could, uh, the, the one that I bought came with two uh, a two year pack of inks. So uh, you can use that. And at the same time. I was working at a library, so I had access to their colored printer as well. So I was able uh, to print from there as well. But of course, you know, you would have to pay for uh, the color print, uh, for, for the color printing, since I had unlimited access to the library, you know, because I was, uh, I was uh, working with them. But of course, you can control the amount that you're printing uh, over there at the library, depending on how much you're able to pay. So it could give them a, a glossier finish depending on what type of printer it is. It could be um, um, inkjet or laser. So just do keep in mind what type of printer that you're, you're, you're using. And at the same time, do keep in mind about the paper type. The one that I used for main bean was standard. So I did come, I did had um, the issue of the ink kind of bleeding through because was very light, so the heavier the paper, the less that um, ink will show through. So definitely take a moment to look at the, the paper weight, or it's also uh, weighted by pound. So definitely keep in mind with that when you're printing from home or you're going to a local library to print. Hopefully when the libraries are open, you can go ahead and, <laughs> and, and, and uh, go ahead over there, so. Yeah. Um. Anybody else about printers? What's that? We, yeah, she answered. We just okay, cool. We didn't use any, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a question from Carmen uh, who asks for self publishing, is it necessary to get an ISBN number for a small run of comics, like 250 copies or less? Or is there a benefit to having an ISBN um, for self published work? kind of yes or no. Um, sorry if I'm taking too much oh, uh, to, go for it. to explain. <laughs> but uh, for the ISBN, I believe once, uh, if you would like to have it, you would know that for sure that your book will be part, will be sold online, like for example, on Amazon, or if your book will be featured in a, a bookstore, because of course they'll have the code, they scan it, they have, it has all the information when it comes to the language, the main language uh, and also the price of the book as well. 
So uh, definitely keep that in consideration because once you have the ISBN, you know for sure this your book will eventually be in a store. But at the same time, if you're if it's uh, much if you're reaching a much smaller uh, audience, for example, at a, a zine fair or a comic book convention, uh, uh, you don't have to put an ISBN. Honestly, if you know the price tag of your book, you just say, "Oh, this is about you know fifteen pound dollars," and you take your card reader and you swipe. And of course, uh, you know, don't worry. If, if you feel like, you know, it, it goes along with the copyright, because automatically, once you make it, it's the copyright is for you. Um, of course, if you want to have an extra layer of safety, you would have to go ahead and um, have your book uh, registered with the copyright office. But that's just, just like a different thing. But if it's self-publishing and you know that your book will be in a bookstore, then yes, have that ISP. If not, then you know, just have it on the table at your uh, at at a, at a convention to just sell, sell it for whatever amount that you have. Um, the next question is from Andrew, and it looks like there there's a little bit of answer in the in the chat. Um, and I I want to state ahead of time that none of us are lawyers. Um, but uh, what about copyright material? Um, <laughs> Like if you're printing a zine that has record label logos, um, but it's um, art. So do you get fair use rights, um, especially if you're publishing more than one? I think it's like the 80%. You have to change it by 80% to be considered some not copyright rule of thumb. I don't Years ago. We're not I lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure that it honestly doesn't look exactly like like this. It might have some hints, but you would just have to make sure whatever lawyer I might not see, like, this is exactly uh, uh, um, an, an image of Spider-Man. Like, for example, you could have a suit that looks like Spider-Man, but you would have a different color. And then they might say, like, no, it looks exactly like it. Then you have to go ahead and change it up a bit to make it resemble something completely else. So I do go off of what you said to make sure that it's 80% different. Well, honestly, completely different as well. But of course, if you're planning to put something copyrighted inside of your uh, book, you would have to make sure that you have permission from the source. Because if you don't, then most likely they could go ahead and try to sue you. Or if they see that you're selling quantities of whatever you're making at a large scale, then they would probably send a cease and desist letter for you to completely stop stop it but of course you can kind of go all, all undercover I and mean, honestly I don't recommend it but you know sometimes you might not get caught <laughs> with what you have because you probably not um, uh, have a huge audience but honestly I do feel like if you do attract a lot of um, eyes then you would have to be very careful of what copyrighted material that you have included in your book yeah like honestly like in our in our you know, world like in the when we're making these zines, like the record label logo one. You know, like we we never really were worried about. Well, I think uh, like it, a. I think what the attention with that zine was more of like an archival, like oh, like like this like thing, kind of like a design guide. Like a reference tool, yeah. Not like oh, let me use this art for something. Or to make money. Yeah. Make it's money more off like, of it. These are badass logos, like. But I. We'll say that one time we were at a book fair and we witnessed an artist see it someone selling so like their art so that's not cool zine. that's different that's another yeah. zine maker copying a t-shirt or something from another small press yeah that's totally not cool and yeah that was some that was some and that good was some independent bookshop like fair like tea, tea sipping yeah. in the corner <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a not that's not cool at all but yeah. You know, like in the zine thing, like we, our first zine was like a reinterpretation of Garfield, you know, so it's like a mess of, you know, like legal stuff, but yeah. we, it, the book consists of like paintings and reappropriation. It's like, that's what zines are like founded on, you know, so it's like, don't worry too much about, yeah. about that personally because we're a small press, you know, so. But copying your local, your, your colleagues, like your buddies, like that's not cool. Like, Obviously. 
Does yeah. that answer your question? I don't know. <laughs> um, I think we have time for one more question. Um, and uh, so this question is from Zeta, who is asking about like paper size, or like, I guess zine size. Um, they say, I work a lot with one page zines and folded zines. What are your thoughts on zine sizes and do they matter? I've noticed size doesn't always matter as long as your subject reaches the right audience, but I haven't seen a lot of opinions about folded slash one page zines. Um, we think the, like the, the first one you do, you know, as a kid, probably you're just like, that's how you like learn about it. And like, that's awesome. And it's still awesome. You know, like, I just think like whatever vehicle you're using to share your ideas is fine. You know? um, and that is like the most cost effective way, which is great. So like if you have information you want to spread it, that might be the best way, you know. Um, we we have published one that was that size. Um, I, I, we still buy them all the time. Yeah, I buy them all the time. Yeah. Um, um, do they have any other any questions about the like the half page or? I think you know it seems yeah. like, like I guess my opinion. So, Go ahead. Sorry, like I guess, yeah, to like to wrap that quick, my opinion is that if it gets your message further and you're able to print more of them and that's what you want to spread your ideas, like that works, yeah. Uh, I have a question for everybody on that too. <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat your question? Well, yeah, I think one of, maybe one of the themes of, of a lot of the, the presentations was kind of like, you know, Whatever the, the the medium that works for you to get your your message and like appeal to the the audience that you're looking for seems to be the the right way to go. Um, so um, there are a lot of really great resources that were posted in the chat. So I strongly encourage people to to link on or click on some of those those links that people put in. Um, and uh, I am posting in um, links. Uh, to all of the presenters right now. Um, and so um, first I want to uh, thank so much um, Allison and Carrie and Lillian and Lulu and Steve um, for your presentations and your conversations. Um, and uh, so, um, whoops, let me, so here are the, the links to, to folks' stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely check out their, their websites. Um, you know, they all have things that you can purchase and, and check out. Um, and uh, our next online event will be September 1st. Um, South Florida's own Drew Lerman will be moderating a conversation between multidisciplinary cartoonists Mark Bell, Tana Oshima, and Matthew Thurber in an event titled Crossing the Panel Border. Um, and then we have two uh, nuts and bolts programs like this one um, scheduled for September on the 8th. Uh, Diego Infante, uh, Mar Julia, um, Is Isai Oviedo, and um, Karina Vo will be discussing their te techniques on digital inking. And then on September 15th, Eric Bonham. Ana Inahosa, uh, Jairo Lantigua, and Drew Lerman will be talking about physical inking. So we will have stuff about like using pens and, and brushes and stuff about using pixels. Um, so an easy way to remember that is that um, that's a, an event each of the first three Tuesdays of September. They're all at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. And um, every Friday we also host a drop-in open studio work session uh, from 4 to 6 p.m for you to make time to work on your comics. It's broken up into 20 minute quiet work sessions buffered by 10 minute breaks for socializing and water drinking. So everybody's welcome to, to join in on that. All the information for the programming and the Zoom links for those can be found at radiatorcomics.com slash studio. Um, I wanna encourage you to get in touch uh, if you want to be involved in any way with Radiator Comics Studio. Um, we want to know who's making comics and who wants to be making comics in South Florida. We're always open to programming suggestions and proposals. Um, my email address to get in touch with me with those sorts of proposals is neil at radiatorcomics.com. That's N-E-I-L at radiatorcomics.com. And um, there's a contact form on our website as well as um, contacting us through social media. So um, 
Uh, yeah, and then this video will be posted on YouTube in the next couple of days if you want to go back and, and check it out. Um, so thanks again so much to um, Bear and B, to Allison CM, and to um, Dale Zine. So thank uh, you. You're awesome. Hey, thank you so much. Everybody thank have a guys. great night. You thank too. You. Bye, guys. Thank you.